150 games at the Melbourne Football Club, including 16 last year. Jack Watts is now a Port Adelaide player. He joins Tom Rockliffe and Stephen Motlop in a very productive period for the Port Adelaide Footy Club. And he joins us now. We welcome him to his new club. Jack, congratulations on the trade and yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, very exciting time. How difficult has it been um, the last week and a half because you've been one of the players who's been spoken about ad nauseum throughout this whole trade period. Are you glad you've finally found somewhere to call home now? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, to be honest, it was probably initially a little bit difficult, but, um, yeah, once I sat down with with Kenny and, um, you know, met a few of the boys, my mind was pretty much uh, made up pretty early on and, um, you know, I guess then the week was just a bit frustrating that, you know, we couldn't say anything and I couldn't say anything and um, just going through a few finer details but, yeah, just stoked that it's all done now and I can, uh, you know, look forward to uh, getting right into it at, at Port Adelaide. Jack, well done. We're going to celebrate your arrival to Port Adelaide. I think you're going to be a perfect fit for them. Noticing a little bit of a lisp in your voice. Have you been to the dentist today? <laughs> no, Simon Hill's been to the dentist. Oh, That's I thought Jack Watson. No, so scratching. Jack Watson's just got a lisp, has he? <laughs> no, no, I think you might have made that up. <laughs> so, sorry, Jack, mate. That's just how I roll. Um, you know what? Jack, how did it come to this, but? I mean, how do you feel? Give, it, give us your feelings. Pick one in 08, nine years at Melbourne, 153 games, contracted, you wanted to stay. I love your dad's supporter you, but Jack, how did it come to this? Um, well, I think Melbourne have obviously, um, you know, they, they've been pretty strong in the type of player that they wanted, and I think, you know, just with the player that I am and what's the, the history that's gone before me, you know, I'd imagine that... Um, you know, Goody probably just wanted to be rid of all of that and, um, you know, have, have a fresh start for himself, mm-hmm. to be honest. So, um, you know, I can understand a little bit of that and, um, you know, I've certainly got no hard feelings towards towards him and that's, you know, that's another thing that's hard. You can't, you know, a lot of people speak in the, in the media and the public and, you know, they talk about a rift and whatever and, it's yeah. just not the case, and um, you know I get along really well with Goody, and I think he's going to be an incredible coach. And it just didn't really work out for for us. So um, yeah, but as I said, looking forward, it's it's so exciting to. Yeah. He's coming to Port Adelaide. Pure class and well said, Jack. We, we played this earlier in the show. I want to play it to you. I don't know whether you've, you've heard it or not. Demons footy manager, and he's a premiership player for Josh Port. Marty. We think he's a ripper. Josh Marty, in his exit today on you, had this to say. We're charged with the responsibility to build the next premiership team at Melbourne Football Club and we have to make decisions all the way along about how we're going to move forward as a footy club. And, you know, it got to that stage where he has been here nine seasons. It was where is the improvement going to come from? And we think our improvement is going to come from a lot of our young players. And, you know, he's gone through five coaching groups at our footy club. And in the end, it was a discussion about, you know, maybe Melbourne Football Club is not the best place for Jack to, to maximise his talent. And that's certainly the decision we've made together as, as a group today. Does that hurt? How do you feel about those comments? Oh look, <laughs> I'm not really going to comment on on what Mars is saying, and but you know, to be honest, I don't think he said too much there that isn't really public knowledge. You know, mm-hmm. it's um, you know, I think he he sees it exactly what I sort of said just before. You know, I think I'll be able to maximise uh, what I can achieve um, elsewhere, and you know, sometimes with that sort of sort of baggage and you know history, it's it's hard to get past that. So um, you know, I'm I'm, uh, I'm very, very excited to to get a fresh start and, um, yeah, really sink my teeth in. Mm. Well, Jack, what I took out of that was that says more about the Melbourne Football Club than it does say about you. They're, they're the ones that had five coaches. They're the ones who haven't been able to maximise well the, the stuff there. So, anyway, um, before we move on, you would have been blown away with the support. I, 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 you know, from afar, I was really not surprised, but you have received a, overwhelming support from so many of the mm-hmm. Melbourne fans. They talked about your reception at the best and fairest. That must have been <laughs> a, a pretty humbling experience when, you know, the, the club's saying, sorry, look elsewhere. Where, but the supporters are saying we loved you as a player. Yeah, it was certainly certainly a really humbling experience. And, um, you know, I've said it a few times, but I think I've probably been the most criticised player, but also the, the most supported out of anyone. And, um, you know, the, the Demon supporters have been incredible and my phone's gone berserk and I obviously can't get back to everyone. But, um, you know, just the support I've had over the last couple of weeks has been incredible and it certainly meant a lot to me and um and yeah it's, it's um 
it's going to be hard leaving them, but um, at the same time, there's some uh, there's some pretty amazing Port Adelaide supporters over over there that I'd love to impress and uh, and get on my side. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Ever spoken to Ken about your role or anything like that? Was that spilled out in the in the wooing of you, Jack? Yeah, yeah. I think you know. I think I'm looking forward to. Um, playing is that, that forward uh, that can connect um, and give us some really good opportunities to score. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, that's probably one of the attractions that, um, you know, I'm not expected to play as that big sort of key forward, which was, you know, what I struggled with a little bit during my time at Melbourne when I had to play as that big key. It was, um, I found it pretty tough. Um, so they're certainly not expecting that. They want me to use use my strengths and, um, and you know, Help out, help out the big fella in, in Charlie and a few of the others up, up forward and give them some pretty easy looks. So, um, yeah, that's that's probably where I fit in. Excellent. Sounds like a good move. Um, also, often you, you, you watch other teams play and you sit from afar and you say to yourself, gee, I'd love to play with that bloke. When you look at Port Adelaide, who jumps to mind first and foremost for you? Who are you looking forward to uh, standing alongside of? Well, I mean, that's part of the attraction, isn't it? There's probably seven or eight of them that I... That I <laughs> That I say that about, you know, obviously Chad Wingard and Robbie Gray and and those boys are, are pretty special players, and I look forward to sort of um, some pretty good synchronisation with those guys. But I, I think for me, I probably admire Travis Boak and the way he goes about his footy and his hard running and his effort and um, team first sort of style um, as a captain. Um, I really admire that. So. And then obviously to sit next to the big fella up forward will be a, a nice little treat for me and um, hopefully I'll, I'll put a few on his chest uh, early on to keep him happy. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I think you fit in beautifully. Bix brought up a stat what, the other day, Bix, about his elite ball use inside yep, second 50. second most efficient player in the and AFL going inside Exactly 50. what Port Adelaide need. Hey, you're an NXS fan. You know how to hum the song? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Played a couple of times. <laughs> Absolutely, I am, and uh, yeah, obviously, the last four or five years, um, getting the, been lucky enough to play over there. But um, obviously, as an opposition player, it still gives me uh, tingles. So I can't mm-hmm. imagine what it, what it will be like to uh, to run out there with never never tear us apart, laughing, and um, you know, on the Adelaide Oval, which is you know, if you're not playing at the MCG, you want to be playing at Adelaide Oval every week. So. Um, you know, that was a huge attraction for me and, and something that really made my decision quite Fantastic. easy. Fantastic. <laughs> Just on that, Jack, initially there was some question marks of whether you would be prepared to sort of move away from Victoria and look at uh, interstate clubs. That, in the end, seen as no impediment for you? No, no. I think, you know, obviously the same stuff that everyone probably goes through um, when moving away. Um, you know, you miss your fa- friends and your family, but, um, you know, as I said earlier, I think I probably weighed that up over one or two days, and then um, once once I got my my mind across it, um, you know, it was almost excitement took over. Really, a whole a whole new area, a whole new um, bunch of friends and mates that I'll meet. Um, you know, I've, I've sort of had a look down at uh, down at Henley Beach and Glenelg, and uh, you know, beautiful parts of the world. So, um, no, certainly. Um, you know, not a huge detractor for me at all. Oh, just Fantastic. be careful because my uh, co-host, Stephen Rowe, yeah. lives at Henley Beach. You mightn't want to plop next to him as his neighbour. You might want to just stay <laughs> well, here. Well, I'm selling my house, Jack, through Harris Real Estate. If you want a tennis court and a pool and all those little bells and whistles, big fella, my men will no, ring your men, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, um, and Melbourne are paying some of your salary. How bloody good is that as well? Is that right? Oh, well, I think uh, you might be able to tell us that. <laughs> a bit of speculation around it, President. Oh, we don't okay. know. We'll, we'll leave, we'll leave <laughs> yeah, that not, there. Not hey, hey, what is your personal situation? You're married, you've got kids, you've got a dog, a cat, a goldfish. What are you, well, Tell us a bit about Jack Watts. No, I've got a, uh, a beautiful girlfriend who's um, overseas at the moment. She's uh, she's had enough of me, so she's uh, moved over to Montreal to, to study for a little while. Wow. Um, so I'm going over to see her tomorrow, actually, which will be great. Goodness me. And what is she studying, Jack? She's doing an arts degree, um, has a pretty big interest in sort of Indigenous culture and history. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, we'll see later down the track. She might um, head down the law path. But well. um, no, she's a smart cookie, keeps me on my toes, that's for mm. sure. Now, is Montreal French-speaking? 
It is. She actually, yeah, she speaks um, fluent French. Wow. So that's why she sort of um, Jack, went Jack. over there and got into it. Now, Jack, be honest with us here. To the uh, port people that are listening, are you batting above your weight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's quite clear clear that I am, but yeah, um, you know, I'll hold on to your life. And um, Good on you. Nah, she's, a, she's a great girl, and um, yeah, looking forward to spending the next two weeks with her. Now, everybody's favourite is Bernie. How did the winning go? <laughs> oh, it was fantastic, yeah. I was, obviously, maybe my mind was elsewhere a little bit because I did just want to get this deal done, but... Yeah. Um, so I was there for the wedding on a Saturday and then came home. But, um, no, it was, it was just beautiful. And, um, yeah, Bernie and Abby will, will live a long, happy life together, I'm sure. Yeah, indeed. Well, we hope you do with Port Adelaide as well, Jack. You know what? I just think it's a perfect fit. It must have been tough. You handled it with pure grace and pure class, which is how you play, Jack. Mate, we're looking forward to seeing you in the, um, the Port Adelaide Strip. Have they given you a number yet, by the way? No, no, I don't think so. We'll, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Something not high and you know, <laughs> high. all attention. And just <laughs> don't need any more attention for you. Well, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, Jack, you'll love the Shiraz grapes of wine here, if you're a Shiraz drinker. <laughs> yeah. Are you a fisherman? Uh, I can certainly get into it. My uncle's a mad fisherman, so okay. um, he'll be pretty happy. Well, I was going to invite you out. You didn't sound too interested, so we'll... <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, we, we understand you might have been having a hit of golf today. Well, we've yeah. got certainly plenty of great golf courses there, so we'll sort you well out done, all Jack. the things you need to know, Jack. Welcome to uh, South Australia. Over the, I'm sure you get here in the coming months, and it's going to be hopefully a fruitful period for you. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, guys. Well done. No worries, Jack. What, sounds like a great bloke, doesn't he? Well, when you do the, the raw numbers, Rockcliffe, Motlop and Watts all... For oh, a solitary picks. pick thirty one, two free agents and pick thirty one to get three players in that most people agree are in the the best twenty two. That's a pretty solid period for them. And you get Ryder, you get Wingard, you get Gray, you get Boat, you get Wines, you get Ebert. He can play. They get him the right position. He will develop under Ken Hinkley. If there's one thing they all said, Rockcliffe, Motlop, and now Jack, getting in that football program with Ken Hinkley, they play their best footy. We haven't seen the best of Jack Watts. We haven't seen the best of Jack Watts. We haven't.